Okay, so I'm gonna start with um it's it's always easier to draw a line um top to bottom. So if you need to tilt your canvas on its side for a minute, but it doesn't really matter for this because what color is that one? So this is this is cerulean. Okay. Um I am gonna add a little bit of white into it. Uh, is that your horizon line, like um, yeah, in the middle of my... the? Yeah, so it's, it's the horizon, it's not the... the up and down. Okay. So it's the bottom um, third. I didn't tilt my canvas on its side just to keep life a little bit easy for you. Um, so I'm just gonna. So it did mix a little bit of white in with that. I'm gonna add some cerulean. And then um, I'm going to start out in my cobalt. So if you don't have cerulean, don't worry. And, uh, it's kind of an interesting exercise in exploring your blues. So here, this is a good example of the transition here from cerulean to cobalt. This is a cobalt. I'm going to start adding in my ultramarine. So you can actually make cobalt with ultramarine, just add in a very tiny amount of yellow to it. Cobalt tends to be a little bit more opaque as well. So I I, I feel it must have a itty bitty bit of white in it. Because ultramarine is definitely um, more transparent. <clears throat> and then as I move through my cerulean, cobalt, ultramarine, um, I'm going to start bringing in some black for the top. And as um, Susan says, you can, I think it was Susan who said, you can stop at any time with this one. This is a nice one for building in layers and just doing as much as you, you feel like, you know. And Leanne, you're not slow. I'm way behind you because I find if I don't watch what Julie's doing, uh, that I need to watch her to learn if I'm painting. I miss yeah. Her. It's it's hard to watch and do, I think, you know. I think that's why it's good to have the videos because you can, you know, you can um, watch it again. And Oh, oh so, so I have to tell you about this nudist resort thing. <laughs> can, so we it's a... can we Maybe we can hire them to do um, figure drawing. Oh, yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea, yeah. So there's actually two nudist resorts close to where I live. Um, and I didn't make the connection. So I had this call from a waitress who I knew from another restaurant who I've, I've done work at that restaurant. And she said, oh, um, you know, working at a new place, a new bar, can you come and do a paint night? And like, yeah, yeah, fine. Booked me. And then I thought that name seems a bit familiar. I'm sure I've heard that name somewhere else. And then it's all can anyway. That's a new district saw. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so I then that uh, was a summer thing about being outdoors. What do we do in the winter? No, they live there. So it's a uh, some people live there all year round. So it's like a so it's off um it's off Brock Road. And um it's like a gated community. And Sounds and they do weird. have they do have a hotel there and people come on vacation there, but some people actually live there and they have houses there and they have like um, mobile homes. And, and um, so, so I had to, I had to ask a few questions before I arrived, like, will people be clothed? 
yeah. um, will I still need aprons if they're not close? <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, you these kind of questions, of... like, are aprons Do they expect you to or? be nude? Is that this has the makings of a comedy sketch, because... Julie. Sorry? And that's material for a comedy sketch. I know, I know. Ken thought it was hilarious. It definitely cheered him up after coming out of hospital saying, guess what I'm doing on Friday? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway so they said to me well they are going to be clothed we've asked everybody to be clothed for, for you the last paint person who came in was also a nudist so she didn't mind and they all painted naked but we've told them that you're not a nudist. <laughs> so I'm like thank you really appreciate it she said so they are going to be clothed but there may be nude people walking around <laughs> so I'm like oh, wow. okay so when I got there sure enough <laughs> are you I going to ask in, them are you going to ask them if you if they they want the video? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so uh, it was in person. So um, don't don't do a video when it's in person. I did think the uh, the group shot was going to be interesting. They could hold their canvases in front of. Um, so I walked in and yeah, there was one one lady very very naked. Which there's something about seeing somebody naked when you're not expecting it. You kind of like, oh, uh, oh, uh, 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 I'll, I'll just go get the rest of my stuff. <laughs> wow. um, but yeah, when I returned, they all had their clothes on and they were very nice. And we had a lot of fun. And um, they all had quite a funny sense of humor as well. Um, so uh, yeah, and then at, at one point, I kind of forgot I was at a new district resort and just was chatting away and and one of them said oh I hear you're you're in a band like oh we'd love to book your band for the summer and I'm like yeah sure you know it'd be great and then I'm thinking hang on a minute <laughs> that that's obviously like for a nudist stance which uh, I'm agreeing to something before I keep reminding them, hang on this is a nudist so the other the rest of the band might not be okay with that yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so was it like gym lock like in the gym's uh devices are off limits is it off our de electronic devices off limits walking around the <laughs> so funny well I still did a group photo of them all I mean they're all clothed because one of the questions I had before I arrived is I said is it going to be really hot because if they're all in the nude they must have to crank the temperature up so maybe I should wear like shorts <laughs> you know they were like kind of things I was thinking maybe it's just going to be like a really hot room like hot yoga or something you know or a bikini or a bikini yeah it was, like, yeah. Yeah, it was a really interesting experience I have to say this job sends me into all sorts of interesting places <laughs> and last weekend I was at a ride in stables because they were doing an adult day camp and um, they were doing crafts at the end with me. Um, so that was interesting, uh, like doing a paint night in a, in basically in a, in a barn. <laughs> so Julie, just so I can apply what my perspective for what I've learned, um, is my horizon line, if I create, establish a horizon line, is yeah. that where I make my vanishing point go? Good point. So, um, or right is there now, in relation uh, to if I'm standing on a hill, I guess that changes the perspective. If I'm yeah. I, the viewer, I'm standing on a hill, yeah. it's about where I'm standing, not where the horizon line is. Yeah. So uh um it's it's where we're gonna position the cottage. So if you have a look at the cottage, um, you know, we talked about things that are face on. So if something face on, it's only got one vanishing point, but as soon as we change the perspective. So if you have a look at the, the cottage, if we were to draw some lines through this based on what we were talking about on Thursday. So you see this, this is like the edge. Can you see my little, what I'm drawing on here? This is the, um, this is kind of the central point here. So we're, we're talking about two point perspective. This is the, uh, this is our center line. So then we have, um, actually the, the, this isn't my original painting. The perspective is, is off actually, which is kind of interesting. Well, that, that's um, why I wanted to use yeah. the perspective. 
yeah yeah the perspective is off so um we're gonna do a, a straight line so we're gonna do the cross you know like we did the cross when we were drawing so it's just a very slight angle the vanishing points here and here where's my ruler I need a ruler Hold on a second the reason I'm asking, I'm I'm sketching in the cabin. Good job. I'm just going to get a ruler. Won't be a second. So remember the, the street scene that we did? I'll just do a very quick sketch here on a bit of paper. I'm gonna recycle my little Santa Claus drawer in here. <laughs> okay. So I'll do a little I mean it's not like this the perspectives necessarily off it could be a snowbank you know obscuring yeah 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 yes yeah. yeah. so... it's this part that's off the this part it's just a tiny bit off but that's okay um okay so imagine this is my sheet of paper Okay, so um, so the cottage. Imagine your vanishing point is is away from the paper. It's it's off the canvas. Okay, so it's further further apart. So um, you think about where your eye line is based on you know the street scene that we drew before, and. I'm going to decide how wide the bottom is going to be. I'm going to take it to that vanishing point. So. So for those people who are not in the drawing class, like there's just a quick, a quick little thing about how to get perspective in, in painting. Okay. So this is my vanishing point here. Um, this is, this is my, my little cottage so now i'm going to do the the edge of it here it's not to scale um in a, in a, in another painting class you talked about center or off center perspective yeah this is very slightly off center but not very much it's almost but, center. You my, could my put question it in is the, if the vanishing points are off the page yeah. they're really centered it's just a matter of where they cross on yeah, your just, canvas right yeah just cool? where it is yeah yeah often the vanishing points will be off i mean it's if i was to paint from a photograph i would look at the photograph and see where where these two lines merge so i would like draw a line here and then draw a line there and then you can see where the point, the vanishing point is here. See, it's just slightly away from the canvas. It's not here because there's still space there. So it's kind of there. Thank you for doing that. No, it's okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, the, the difference is, is I think there's like a little, there's like an extra bit of building coming out of here. Yeah. If if we can so, keep in, incorporating the theory like you, you yeah you, absolutely you repeat it with the color theory often yeah but I find for my brain it reinforces what I yeah find. so if you look at the roof this brings in a new vanishing point so if you take the roof and then look at that angle. See how this brings in a new vanishing point with the roof. See where that is. Let's go into kind of here. Cool. Once you find one vanishing point, then it helps with everything else. Um, but this isn't this 
this is an example of multiple vanishing points because you've also got that this one, one. Yeah. okay so you've also got that one as well the um and then this yeah, is the one which I... is this is the one which is bothering me this one because that's kind of off So it should be more like that. I would do it like that if it was two. So you see how you've got these multiple vanishing points in one picture. Right. But it's useful to know where they are because then everything is is going to those points. So even um, you know, the the trees in the foreground are all your shadows, like everything's gonna help. So yeah. Huh. Anyway, let's get let's do our background and then um, we'll go. Is this we'll, too we'll much black. I, I wonder if um, I got carried away with the black here. It's a it's a bit dark, but I we can do a bring, little bit. More, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can do a bit more blue. I raise it up a little bit more. I think. Yeah, I mine, mine's gone quite dark as well. But if you notice on the picture, it's kind of a bit cloudy. So we can actually put another layer on top of this. See how it's kind of cloudy? Right. So don't, right. don't worry about it. I would get, um, let's get a filbert. Well, let's do the bottom first. I want to do the, the, just fill in where the lake's going to be in a minute. So um, you can always flip it upside down. <laughs> So yeah, so with the lake, I'm gonna be black at the bottom. So that the video that I put in the drawing class, did you watch the one with the box, the lid of the box that was open and where the vanishing point went? And that's oh, kind of similar to the triangle roof, because if you have a square box and then you open the lid, the lid creates a new vanishing point. Um, so it's kind of the similar to the roof, like this is like a box with the lid open, you know. So I'm just mixing ultramarine. The black's gone a bit dark, but are you putting white in it? Yeah, I'll put white in it in a minute. Yeah. At the moment, it's just ultramarine and black. Size. Oh, you're using a wide brush. Is that like a one inch flat? Uh, yeah, I think it's. Um, okay, I'm using a small one here. Maybe I'll use a bigger one. Three quarters inch. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can you move your picture up a bit? It's not showing the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So that's black and ultramarine? Black and ultramarine, yes. Just for our base layer, you know. I'll bring the white in later. I'm just giving it a bit of a base to start with. Okay. So Leanne, we would um, don't worry about lightening yours because we're gonna put some of this kind of misty, cloudy stuff going on. So I'm gonna use a a filbert, a fairly small filbert. Just gonna find my filbert.
if I had just been eyeballing it, I would have got the perspective wrong. Oh, um, are you drawing it out first then? Yeah. So I've got, got my little filbert. And um, I'm going to start with where my moon area is going to be. So it's kind of about it's kind of about here. Um, so I'm going to mix white with um, cerulean blue. You can use cobalt blue. And um, I'm using a filbert. And eventually I'll make this really bright white in the middle, but I'm just uh, creating the haze that's going to go around the moon. Which Myself. one's the filbert? Filbert is the one that's flat with like a rounded edge. Rounded, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. It's good for creating like cloud shapes and mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna expand out from that area. Sorry, and it was white and white and cerulean. Brilliant. Okay. If you don't have cerulean, then um, cobalt is fine. I've uh, got it. Yeah. Thank you. And then I'm just kind of going in little, little swirls. And you don't have to do this super thick because we've got the underpainting underneath. You can, you can afford to do this more of a glaze if you want. So it doesn't matter if what's underneath shows through. So as I expand out, I'm using more kind of watered down paint. This is where you can lighten yours, Leanne. Okay, thank you. But yeah, I'm using quite watered down paint as a glaze over the top. Little swirly whirlies. And as I work up, I'm going to bring in my cobalt blue Just to make it a little bit more textured. Definitely went a bit dark then.
Now, we wanted to make this a little bit more turquoisey. You could put a little bit of phthalo green in with your cerulean. And the base maybe felt like you wanted to give it a little bit of warmth. The shame we don't have time for coffee, Leanne. I could have met you for a coffee at the Copper Kettle, but... Oh, that would have been fun. Mondays are just my loony busy day because I work till 10 p.m. at the golf course after my senior centre class. Well, I won't keep you too long. <laughs> I guess it won't work this time. Hopefully, in the better weather, we can get together yeah. at a better place like we've talked about. Oh, yeah. I yeah. still want to do that. That would be really fun. I really yeah. want to do the planer or the, the little archer at my place. It just never happened. Like, everything just got so busy. Well, it's been unusual times. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, I'm just, just for fun. I felt like my cerulean needed to be a little bit greener, so it did bring in a little bit of uh, halo green. Not necessary, just a preference. I just wanted a little bit turquoisey. So this is um, aqua green, which is basically phthalo green with white in it. So aqua green or phthalo green. They're actually the same color, just the aqua green has white in it. So whatever above, we mimic below. So I am going to put in my moon. And I like to just use my pinky finger dipped in white paint. Or I might use my ring finger, actually, dipped in white paint. So I'm going to go about middle of the canvas, slightly off to the side. Yeah. And I'm going to use my filbert to just uh, tweak that a little bit. I always use my finger for moons and suns. It's the best way to get a, a round shape.
Still needs to be a bit lighter around there. How are we all doing? We're doing. <laughs> Slow. I'm trying to remember how we did the clouds. I haven't used a filbert in a long time. I'm just going in little circles then. Just little circles. Just very lightly, like just other. light little circles. And then I'm going to start by putting a bit of my cerulean with a bit of white. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to go super light to start with. I'm going to bring that down as a reflection. And I'm going to build my reflection up in a few layers. So. Um, So I'm going to start with my cerulean color, the little tiny bit of white. It's going to stop on the edges of it.
shoot. going to stick the hairdryer on this for a second. So I'm just going to take my filbert, go directly below my moon. It doesn't matter that this is actually going to be land. I'm going to take my reflection with my filbert and I'm just going to wiggle it down. And then I'm gonna drag out the sides a little bit to soften it.
Yeah, a good thing about my connection with the nudist resort is could have potential have some life models there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can establish a barter system. <laughs> I know, like an energy exchange. Yeah, I was. That's what that. I did at the, the riding stables. I exchanged paint lessons for um, riding lessons. That will be my smile for the rest of the day. The thought of <laughs> you teaching painting at a nudist colony. I know. I thought it would make you laugh. <laughs> so I'm just, I've switched my filbert for a flat. And I'm just bringing a few lines across now don't forget as ripples get further away they get closer together i'm just doing a couple of fine lines Well, I think what would make you smile is just imagining my reaction when I walked in and there was a lady just propped up against the bar with absolutely nothing on. And I was like, oh, I, I, I just got some more stuff to bring in. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> I felt more British than I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> You'd have to bring out the Canadian in you doing sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a little break from this. And um, we're going to work on some of those very distant trees. So you don't need to worry too much about the horizon right, line right now because we're going to be playing around with it. But we're going to do those very distant trees. Now, they're very kind of um, subtle. Like we are kind of just dabbed. There's not a lot of detail there. Um, so do you remember that black and blue that we did at the top? We're going to um, add some white to that to make a gray that's going to go up and behind here it is lighter around the moon so these there's two levels of of trees there's these ones back here and then there's a few more kind of in front so we're going to do these distant ones first of all on the left hand side um the lighter underneath the moon they're going to get a little bit darker as they get further away um you can actually use your filbert for this if you want or you can use a flat um, but we're just going to dab, 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 dab. No detail. Um, so let's take our... Um, I might take my cerulean oxy with a bit, of, uh, a bit of black. So remember our tint tone and shade? Tint is adding white. Shade is adding black. Tone is adding black and white. We're going to tone our blue. So I'm going to take my cerulean and I'm going to tone it. So that's adding gray. So tint tone shade, adding gray. So black and white.
Could you say that again? So tint is adding white, tone is adding gray, All right. and shade is adding black. So okay. we're going to tone it. So we're going to add gray. To the cerulean. To the cerulean, yeah. Okay. So we need to make gray and then add it to the cerulean. Is that what you're Absolutely, okay. yeah. Make gray and add it to the cerulean. So you want a light gray. You don't want a dark gray. You still want to see a lot of the blue in there. And you kind of need to see how it looks against the canvas to see how it's going to pan out. I feel like this area is too dark on mine. I'm going to lighten that before I put my trees on. I'm just going to and put a little glaze of white over the top here because it has gone far too dark. So just underneath my moon, I needed to lighten my sky a little bit. So I'm doing a glaze, which is just a very thin down white paint. Should help. I need to switch some of my but it's funny how it, you don't realize how dark something is until you try and put another color on. Okay, Did you it. just thin that with water, Julie? Just water, yeah. Just water. It, was, it, it just was too dark. And around the moon, it would be lighter. So just water and white paint. That's better. It's just too dark. It's nice doing this painting over two lessons instead of one because I was always, always rush, rush the background on this painting because I've been trying to get the whole painting done in two hours. It's nice to do it in a longer lesson. Okay, that's better. All right, so now you'll be able to see the trees a bit better. Just going to quickly dry that. Okay, so let's take our tint tone and shaded cerulean, sorry, toned cerulean. And you can use a flat brush or a filbert. I use a small flat. And I'm just going to start by dabbing a few lines. I'm going to take them right up underneath the moon. So, um, so no detail at all, just so this is my cerulean with a little bit of gray in it. I'm just dabbing. Paint to it. Right. 
I'm just stopping up and down. Julie, just to generalize what you just did. So let's say we were working in different hues, like different colors. Yeah. Would yeah. we take whatever color that background sky is and do yeah. the tone? And tone it, yeah. So whatever color you have and tone it. It just add gray. Um, where am I? Yeah, and you can subtly try adding a little bit more gray to it. You know, see. So as we move away from the moonlight. Be a little bit darker. So I'm not worrying about making these look like trees at the moment because it's just a background. You can make it a little bit lighter under the moon where you'd be catching the light. Just dab, dab, dabbing. No detail, just dab, dab, dab. And I remember tint tone and shade. Tints add in white, tones add in gray, shades add in black. We can put some trees in front and they will have the shade. So the shade is just the black and the blue. Now what I'm gonna do as you can see that our, we have like a, some land here around before we get to the water. Now water's not gonna be very deep. It's gonna take us to about there. So the land's gonna go to about here. Um, so I'm gonna actually start a little bit below here and just slightly below. I can fill in all that snow later. And I'm going to make it look a little bit more like a tree in that I'm dabbing. But I'm getting, I'm kind of going side to side as I get lower down. So I'm starting with a, a little dab. And then I'm going side to side as I get lower. Just to create a little feeling of some trees, not very many, I'm not going to put many in. So dab, 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 and then side to side. I get up there. Dab, 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 side to side. Yes. 
Inside. Feeling quite Christmassy, this. <laughs> So over here on the right, it kind of looks more like sort of bushes. So I'm just kind of rounding off a bit here. Oh. I got a lot of space to cover. Oof. Julie, what are you doing with the white there? So this is just um, kind of like bushes here. So I did my tone, which is my blue and black, and I kind of just did more dabbing in circles. And then I just put a little bit of white in the mix because there's a bit of light where the moon is catching on the edges at the tops of these trees or bushes, whatever they are. So I just added a little bit of white in there just to give them a little bit of a highlight. Oh, great. Light so it's the light source. Yeah. So it's just the moon hitting this a little bit.
Oh. Feels very Lord of the Ringsy at the moment. It's funny you should say that. I keep calling my first granddaughter precious, and the way um, I say it, they think precious. it's that Plash, yeah, from the movie. Precious. <laughs> precious. My son and son-in-law and daughter are fans of that series. Like I, I didn't even think of that, but they start doing <laughs> voice with precious. Precious. Yeah, I haven't watched the new one yet. So then take a break from the trees for a minute. We're going to sketch out where the where the land is, and um, I'm not going to start with pure white. I'm going to start with tint. Remember tint, tone, and shade. So I'm tinting um, my cerulean blue, or whatever blue you're using. So just to like a very pale blue to start with, some tinting to start with. And I'm just gonna put in my my little uh, shoreline here. So this is coming off at a little bit of an angle. I'm that's, using a filbert. That's not white? No, it's tinted. So it's, okay. it's All right. awesome. Cerulean blue tinted with white. Right, okay. Tint tone and shade. So we're basically doing a, a monochromatic painting. Like, a, yeah. I mean, we will be bringing in some yellows and pinks and stuff. But yeah. It makes it very restful to look at. Yeah. Just, just the way it is. We can stop now. It looks lovely. Yeah, exactly. You can stop at any point with this one. Okay, so that's an interesting angle here. It's great how your tinting and toning created such depth in that background. Wow. It's such a simple thing to do, the tint, tone, and shade, but it makes such a difference. So um, in the foreground here, so I've sketched out the, uh, the little shapes here, and then I am going to use tone. So I'm going to gray this a little bit. Because if I gray the whole thing, then that's creating my shadows. And then I'm just adding the white 
as the highlight. See, this might not be the right color just yet, but I'm just blocking in to get my idea of my shape. 